Welcome back everyone to my continued coverage of the 2020 New Japan Cup. Once again, I want to thank you for pushing that play button. I am the natural Chris Black, veteran of the independent wrestling scene and one of the hosts of the Saturday Night Slamcasters podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, this tournament has been absolute fire and I can guarantee it's only going to get better. Today we are talking about night seven, the quarterfinals of the 2020 New Japan Cup. Let's get right into the action. Match one, we have Tomohiro Ishii taking on Himuro Takahashi. After Takahashi's last match, he seems to have gotten his swagger back a little bit. There's a little bit of a face off in the middle of the ring as Takahashi stares down Ishii. Uh, Takahashi makes the mistake and tries to shove Ishii around and he's run over of like a truck. <laughs> they decide to exchange chops, but Ishii is just way too much. Ishii starts to taunt him, but Takahashi doesn't back down, which doesn't stop the onslaught of Ishii. With his speed, Takahashi is able to take Ishii down, but not for long as Ishii continues to outmuscle him. Takahashi needs to change up his strategy. Trying to beat Ishii at his own game is not really working out for him. He attempts a flurry of fast-paced moves trying to keep Ishii down, but even after a shotgun dropkick, Ishii still runs him over. Ishii has clearly has the advantage, but as I watch how dominant he's being, I can't help but wonder if Takahashi will be able to pull out a victory. Ishii lands a stiff clothesline into Takahashi into the corner. He sets Takahashi up for a suplex. Takahashi tries to fight. Uh, and stands up, he blocks a lariat and slaps Ishii across the face and is met with an insiguri that takes and takes the lariat this time, turning him inside out. Takahashi fights to get up and pitifully hits him with some forearms and just gets rocked by one from Ishii and follows it up with a sliding clothesline. Takahashi looks absolutely out of it, but he manages to counter and gets a good roll up to no avail. Ishii nails another lariat and god damn Takahashi lands awkwardly right on his head. Yikes. Ishii shows no mercy, picks him back up only to catch a super kick. Takahashi is not finished yet. Takahashi is giving Ishii everything he's got trying to put him away. This match has been absolutely amazing. Takahashi named, nails a time bomb but Ishii kicks out at the last second. After a couple more attempts, he finally nails a time bomb that puts Ishii away in 19 minutes 29 seconds. What an absolutely brutal hard fought match. Great way to start the night. Takahashi really earned this victory. In match 2, we have Yoshihashi taking on Evil. Yoshihashi hyperextended his leg during his last match uh, less than 24 hours ago. So it'll be very interesting how this will affect this match. He is visibly hurt, walking with a limp. Evil attacks him right away with the chair before the bell rings, further damaging the already injured leg. Yoshihashi calls for the bell, says he wants to continue and fight, attempts to fight off Evil, but Evil attacks the leg every chance he gets. Evil locks in the Scorpion Theft Lock, and the ref has no choice but to call for the bell in two minutes. Evil continues his attack, on Yoshihashi after the bell. Evil has been absolutely, well, evil during this tournament. Like, he really wants to win this thing. <sighs> Jesus, I've never seen this side of evil before, which is ironic because his name is Evil. All right, so the next match, we got a six-man tag. Yura, Yumira, Sho, and Hiroki Goto is taking on L.I.J., Bushi, Shingo Tagaki, and Tetsuyo Naito. Yumiro wants to start the match and rushes Tagaki. Yumiro actually gets the upper hand. Sho gets tagged in, um, and I see that his upper right thigh is wrapped up. That's interesting. I'm going to keep an eye on that. Uh, LIJ, LIJ works very well with each other, having some quick tags in and out while isolating Sho. Goto manages to tag in and is able to hold his own and his team is able to gain the advantage for a short time, but LIJ is such a unit, they take back over pretty quickly. Yumura is a firecracker, but he falls to Bushi with a lung blower for the pin in 9 minutes and 34 seconds. Sho is still staring down Tagagi, alluding to he wanting a title match for that never open weight heavyweight title. This was a very fast-paced match, again, 
these matches are designed to give you a preview of some matches coming up. I think they're really starting to push the Show versus Tagaki match that's going to go down probably in the near future. Alright, in the fourth match you have Kazuchika Okada taking on Taiji Ishimori. Alright, Ishimori, one of my favorites in this tournament, one of the new guys that I've discovered, although I'm pretty sure he's not new to people who've been watching. Ishimori quickly goes on the offensive trying to gain a quick advantage, but to no avail, there's an obvious big size difference between Okada and Ishimori. Okada is, is not rushing and waits for Ishimori to get back into the ring. Gato comes out and distracts Okada as Ishimori goes on the attack. Using speed, agility, and aggression, Ishimori stays on top of Okada. Okada begins to turn things around with a flapjack and begins to mount an offense. A little back and forth, and Ishimori attempts a yes lock, but Okada gets to the rope. Ishimori is actually holding up very well against Okada. Um, of course, Gato's presence uh, helps, but it's really not needed. I think that Ishimori can probably have a good match without having Gato cheat for him. Okada has actually been at the mercy of Ishimori during most of this match, and Ishimori has really made an impact in this tournament. Putting Okada into another yes lock, he seems to be on the verge of tapping, but he gets to the rope again. I really thought Okada might tap now. Ishimori reverses a tombstone into a double knee in an awesome show of strength. However, Okada does hit a jumping tombstone and goes for the Cobra Clutch, but releases it when Gato jumps on the apron. He puts on the Cobra Clutch again, but Ishimori pulls the ref, taking him out. Gato tries to hit Okada with some knuckles. But gets taken out. He reapplies the Cobra Clutch for a tap out victory in 16 minutes and 52 seconds. Uh, it was sad to see Ishimori get eliminated, but Okada is one of my picks for potentially being in the final, so it was gonna happen sooner or later. Alright, in the main event tonight, we have Sonata versus Tai Chi. I have anticipated this match and I have high expectations. So each of these guys begin to take their time before starting, not wanting to make any mistakes. Tai Chi grabs the tag rope and tries to choke Sonata with it, but the ref sees it and breaks it. Tai Chi takes Sonata to the outside to do some punishment. Still not rushing and using a very deliberate pace, Tai Chi continues to brutalize Sonata. Tai Chi provokes Sonata into a striking exchange. Uh, Sonata actually gets the advantage and drops kicks Tai Chi in the leg. Sonata applies a paradise lock to Tai Chi onto the bottom rope after Tai Chi pitifully tried to do it first. Once released, Tai Chi is able to land one of his signature kicks to the face right in the corner. In the face! <laughs> he starts to pro provoke Sonata again and they exchange blows, neither one wanting to back down and Tai Chi's kicks are just too much and Sonata falls down to the mat. He sets up for the super kick out of the corner but is caught by Sonata. Both men are trying to end this match. Sonata gets him in the skull end, but the ref is distracted by Katamaru, who comes out, who misses the tap out. Tai Chi hits a snap back suplex and locks Sonata into the stretch pump, having him locked in real tight. At the last minute, Sonata slips out and gets to the rope. Sonata is still down, however, uh, the beating taking a toll on him, but he fights out of the last ride before getting nailed with a high knee. Sonata does manage to hit a TKO, but cannot follow up with the pin. He locks him into the skull end once again, spins him around. Tai Chi tries to grab the ref. Kanemuro uses the distraction again, but Sonata outsmarts him, rolls him up for the pin in 22 minutes and 50 seconds. Sonata is absolutely pissed after, I mean not Sonata, Tai Chi is absolutely pissed at this, but what's he gonna do? I think he's got bigger plans down the line as he, and Zack Sabre Jr. is probably going to challenge Tanahashi and Ibushi for the IWGP World Tag Team Titles. Well, that's it for the quarter uh, for the quarterfinals in the New Japan Cup. Thank you for tuning in. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button; it'd be much appreciated, so you are notified whenever new videos are posted. And if you are so inclined, you can always follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the natural Chris Black, and give me a follow on Twitter at the underscore natural underscore CB. You want to know what else is going on in the world of professional wrestling outside of New Japan? 
check out the Saturday Night Slamcasters podcast, where myself, Xavier Mustafa, and True Element 78, 78 discuss the business and everything about it. Uh, our podcast is available every second and fourth weekends of the month, Saturdays of every month, and is available on pretty much every podcasting platforms. Give us a follow on Facebook at Slamcasters. And while you're at it, go ahead and visit our YouTube channel. We post reviews of such documentaries as Dark Side of the Ring, The Ruthless Aggression Era. We are currently right now releasing all of our episodes of Season 2 of The Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, Tomorrow, July 15th, we are releasing Episode 5 dealing with... uh, What's his name? (laughs) Damn it. Superfly Jimmy Snooker. I almost forgot for a second. July 15th. Check out the Saturday Night Slamcasters YouTube page. Dark Side of Ring Episode 5. And until next time, when I bring you coverage of the semifinals of the New Japan Cup, I will see you next time. Come get slammed. <laughs>